let's go on to section seven. Dogs can laugh in heaven. I went back to school the Tuesday after the memorial service. That's when I found out I was famous. Zoe and I were walking into the building when we passed a bunch of sixth graders standing outside the door. As I reached for the door handle, I heard one of them say, hey, look, there's the sister of that dead kid. My blood went cold when I heard that and my stomach heaved so violently, I thought I might get sick. I ran inside and ducked into the girls' bathroom. But by the time I got there, the shock had worn off and I was just plain mad. Ignore him, said Zoe. The kid's a total moron. But she knew there was no way I could ignore something like that. And a second later, I was outside again, push, pushing my way through the crowd of kids till I found the creep who'd said it. I shoved him up against the wall and pointed my finger at his face. Don't you ever call my brother the dead kid again. Do you hear me? His name was Mick Hart. And from now on, if you want to talk about him, which you're not even fit to do, you'll use his name. You got that creep? Do you have that? When Zoe pulled me away, I was shaking so hard I couldn't stop. I didn't care, though. It was right for me to do that, and I'd do it again. I swear to God I would. I wasn't sure what to expect when I went to my first class. In the back of my mind, I suppose, I thought it would be a little like the memorial service. People would come up and say they were sorry to me, and I'd say things, I'd, I'd say thanks or something equally stupid but we get through it. Only as it turned out, it was a lot easier than I imagined because nothing happened at all. That is, unless you count how quiet the room got when I walked in and how everyone pretended they weren't really looking at me when the whole time they were plainly sneaking peeks as I walked to my desk, all except Eileen Fender, Fendendorf. Fendendorf? That's a tough name. That is, Elaine turned right around in her chair and followed me straight to my seat. I stared at her until she turned back. Don't ever get into a staring contest with me, by the way. You'll never win. Eileen Fentendorf knows that now. She was in three of my morning classes, and I stared her down in every one of them. Just for the record, though, by lunchtime, not one single person had come up to me to say they were sorry. <clears throat> Not one. Had said Mick's name. They're not trying to be mean, Phoebe. They're just. They just don't know what to say. So he told me. I tried to shrug it off. Yeah, well, no big deal, I said. But when we sat down to eat and my so-called real friends waved from the other end of the table at lunch. And then quickly looked away, I finally lost it. I glared at them like you wouldn't believe. I'm not going to go nuts if you talk about him, you know. What's wrong with you guys anyway? Didn't you go to grief counseling? Zoe, Zoe said you were there. But you must not have been listening because we're all supposed to be saying Mick's name, right? Remember? Kara Cook looked totally mortified. Yeah, but we just weren't sure if we should or not, Phoebe. I mean, we don't want to make you feel worse or anything. Yeah, right. Like that would even be possible. Then all at once, Lindsay Nelson sort of laughed for, lunged, sorry, for my hand and squeezed it real tight. And Amy Leitner blurted out something incredibly stupid about how her mother said to say hi to my mother. I pretty much learned my lesson after that. I didn't force them to talk anymore. Mostly, I just sat there staring at my hoagie while the three of them crammed their lunches down their throats so they could get the heck away from me. Their mouths were still full when they took their trays back. After they were gone, I put my head down on the table and I didn't move. Not even after the bell rang. Zoe started, Zoe stayed with me till the cafeteria had emptied. Then I heard her calm, quiet voice next to my ear. Phoebe, I think you should go to the nurse and ask her to let you go home. I nodded blankly and stood up. So. Walked me to Zoe walked me to the hall. I never made it all the way to the nurse, though. To get to her office, you have to go through the main reception area, and Miss Berryhill was there. As soon as she saw me, she put her arm around me and steered me through her door. It's too bad she didn't have a clue about the kind of mood I was in. 
Maybe then she wouldn't have been so quick to tell me about how she had lost her own mother two years ago and how losing a family member is the, the worst kind of pain there is and how in time I would learn to accept my loss and go on. I stood up. He's not my loss, Miss Berryhill, I told her. I didn't just misplace him or leave him behind on a bus somewhere. He died, okay? Mick died. But he will never, ever be lost. So please, do not say that word to me one more time. I didn't wait for her to reply. I just turned around and ran out of the office as fast as I could. I didn't stop either. I kept right on going. Out of the building, down the block, and up the street to my house. Nana from Florida was already talking to Miss Berryhill on the phone. I ignored her fingers, snapping at me as... I blitzed down the hall to Mick's room. Then, then quietly, I pulled the door shut behind me. This time, I had known from the start where I was headed. I went straight to Mick's bed and crawled underneath his covers. Then I buried my face in his pillow, and I breathed in the smell of him. All right, we're going to have to continue on. Um, 